Thank you for joining us for our reflection on a lesson from the Daily Office Lectionary. My name is Father Tom Papazoglakis and I serve as Rector at St. George's Episcopal Church in Clifton Park, New York. Today is Thursday in the week of the seventh Sunday after Pentecost, Proper 10. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our lesson is from the Acts of the Apostles, the 13th chapter, beginning at the first verse. Now in the church at Antioch there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon, who was also called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, a member of the court of Herod the ruler, and Saul. While they were worshiping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. Then, after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews. And they had John also to assist them. When they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they met a certain magician, a Jewish false prophet named Bargesus. He was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, an intelligent man who summoned Barnabas and Saul and wanted to hear the word of God. But the magician Elymas, for that is the translation of his name, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, You son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, full of all deceit and villainy, will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? And now listen, the hand of the Lord is against you, and you will be blind for a while, unable to see the sun. Immediately mist and darkness came over him, and he went about groping for someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed for he was astonished at the teaching about the Lord. Here ends the lesson. Our lesson today is rich in messages that could be missed by a casual reading. It begins with the commissioning of Saul and Barnabas after a period of fasting and prayers with the prophets and teachers from the Antiochian community. Barnabas and Saul had been active members of that community, teaching, worshiping, fasting, and praying prior to being commissioned and sent out. The Holy Spirit confirmed this commissioning, calling for Barnabas and Saul to be sent out in accordance with God's will and purpose. After having hands laid on them in prayers, Saul and Barnabas sailed off to preach the gospel in the synagogues at Salamis. We should not be surprised that immediately after they preached the good news, the forces of evil or demonic powers confronted them. That is the nature of spiritual warfare. First, there is some movement toward God and the ways of God, whereupon it is not uncommon to then see the forces opposed to the way of God resist movement toward God. Satan will oppose our efforts. That is what happened to Jesus after his baptism when Satan in the wilderness confronted him. It also happened to Peter after the Holy Spirit descended on the Twelve when Satan, working through Ananias and Sapphira, tried to deceive Peter and the disciples by withholding proceeds from the sale of their property. This validates Saul's, who is now called Paul's, legitimacy as a prophet and apostolic leader in the line of Jesus and Peter. It was by overcoming the forces of evil through the power of the Holy Spirit that the gospel continued to bear fruit as it spread to new and expanded territories. Another exciting message in this lesson is the Roman authorities' engagement with the gospel 
as the proconsul saw what happened and believed. Let us pray. Almighty Father, whose blessed Son before his passion prayed for his disciples that they might be one, as you and he are one, grant that your church, being bound together in love and obedience to you, may be united in one body by the one Spirit, that the world may believe in him whom you have sent, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and join us every weekday for our reflection. If you live in the Clifton Park area, join us for worship at 4.30 on Saturdays, 8 or 9.30 on Sunday mornings, or 12.15 on Wednesdays, which includes anointing for healing. If you're unable to join us in person, join us virtually through our YouTube channel. Our webpage provides recordings and details about all of our offerings.